Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Today we're going to learn to avoid some important mistakes and practice speaking English correctly. So let's get started. First, this is not correct. And this way, when I take my leg off the brake pedal, the car starts moving. I cannot say when I take my leg off the brake pedal. It's not your leg, it's your foot. We say when you take your foot off the brake pedal, the car starts moving. So don't say leg, say foot. Pronunciation, use the uh sound, the short uh, like good. Foot, foot. When you take your foot off the brake pedal, the car starts moving. Let's practice. What happens when you take your foot off the brake pedal? That's right. When you take your foot off the brake pedal, the car starts moving. This is also not correct. The process of putting the seatbelt on is called tightening the seatbelt. First, it's not process, it's process. The process of putting your seatbelt on is called tightening your seatbelt. It's not called tightening. It's called putting on your seatbelt. We don't use the verb tighten in this case. Use the phrasal verb put on. You can say put on your seatbelt. You can say fasten your seatbelt. Or you can just say buckle up. Don't say tighten your seatbelt. So, when I get in the car, I put on my seatbelt. Or, when I get in the car, I fasten my seatbelt. Or, when I get in the car, I buckle up. But I don't tighten anything. Tighten is different. Let's practice. What do you do when you get in a car? Do you put on the seatbelt? That's right. When I get in a car, I put on the seatbelt. What do you do when you get in a car? Do you fasten the seatbelt? That's right. When I get in a car, I fasten the seatbelt. What do you do when you get in a car? Do you buckle up first? That's right. When I get in a car, I buckle up first. I don't tighten anything. This is also not correct. And then if you want to open the window, you press the button that is called window power. And the window goes down. I cannot say press the window power button. They're not called window power. They're called power windows. We have to use this order. Power windows. Example, my car has power windows. What about your car? Does your car have power windows? Very good. This is also not correct. And it's a rear facing car seat because whenever Emily's here, she's facing rear. And for all the infants and all the small babies, you have to have a rear facing car seat in the US. I cannot say she's facing rear. It's a rear facing car seat, but we cannot say she's facing rear. You can say she's facing the other way, or you can say she's facing toward the rear, but not she's facing rear. Let's practice. Is she facing toward the rear? That's right. She's facing toward the rear, toward the back of the car. Is she facing the other way? That's right. She's facing the other way, but I cannot say she's facing rear. This is also not correct. This is my car's trunk, and I can open it by pressing this button on the key. I cannot say my car's trunk. I cannot use the possession with apostrophe S for your car. We use car as an adjective. My car trunk. We cannot say my car's door. It's my car door. We cannot say my car's tires. We say my car tires. We cannot say car's tires. It's car tires. No apostrophe S for your car. No possession. And you don't have to say car. You can say trunk. We know what it is. Open the trunk. Close the trunk. I can open the trunk from inside my car. What about you? Can you open the trunk from inside your car? Very good. This is also not correct. It has speedometer uh, that shows the speed. This glass in front of me is called windshield in the US. This mirror is called rear view mirror. So whenever I'm driving backwards, I can use either the rear view mirror or the rear view camera. So this is called moon roof. This is called horn. I cannot say it has speedometer. Speedometer is a gauge and it's countable. 
So I need the article a. Uh. It has a speedometer. You can also use the, the speedometer. You need to check the speedometer. Or you can use possession, my speedometer, your speedometer. You need to check your speedometer. You're driving too fast. Example, you need to check your speedometer. You're driving too fast. Or I can say he needs. He needs to check the speedometer. Or he needs to check his speedometer because he's driving too fast. Let's practice. Does he need to check the speedometer? That's right. He needs to check the speedometer. Why does he need to check the speedometer? That's right. He needs to check the speedometer because he's driving too fast. Windshield. Rear view mirror. Moonroof. Horn. These are all countable nouns. I need an article. I have to say a windshield or the windshield if it's specific. I have to say a rear view mirror or the rear view mirror. I have to say a moonroof or the moonroof for a specific one. If you're speaking in general, I can say a. Uh, my car has a moonroof. But if I say open, I don't say open a moonroof. It's specific. I say open the moonroof or close the moonroof. And I cannot say it's called horn. Horn is countable. I have to say a horn. It's called a horn. And what's the action? Honk. Honk the horn. Then we use the article the because it's specific. People like to honk the horn when they're angry. I don't like to honk the horn. What about you? Do you like to honk the horn when you're angry? Very good. This is also not correct. The thing is, this car has automatic transmission. This means that the speed changes automatically. So I cannot say this car has automatic transmission. Transmission is countable, so I need an article. This car has an automatic transmission. So some cars have an automatic transmission and some cars have a manual transmission. My car has an automatic transmission. What about your car? Does your car have an automatic transmission or a manual transmission? Very good. This thing here is called a stick shift. That is not called a stick shift. That's called a gear shifter. So what is a stick shift? You can call it a stick shift if you have a manual transmission. If your car is a standard, you can also say the car is a stick shift. You can refer to the thing, the stick, as a stick shift, and you can refer to the car as a stick shift. Example, I know how to drive a stick shift. That means I know how to drive a standard. I know how to drive a car with a manual transmission. Let's practice. Do you know how to drive a stick shift? Very good. But if your car is an automatic, it's not a stick shift, it's a gear shifter. The stick is called a gear shifter. Whether it comes out of the floor or it comes out of the steering wheel, it's called a gear shifter. Let's watch another clip. And I use it to either park my car to drive or to drive backwards. The thing is, this car has automatic transmission. Drive backwards? I guess it's possible to say drive backwards. We use a phrasal verb, back up. That's right, back up is a phrasal verb. We're using back as a verb. When you drive backwards, we say back up. Example, it's dangerous to back up onto a busy street. You can't see very well, and the cars are going fast. It's dangerous to back up onto a busy street. Let's practice. Is it dangerous to back up onto a busy street? That's right. It's dangerous to back up onto a busy street. Let's hear another clip. So what I do here, I press the brake pedal again, and I put this stick shift into the drive mode. You put the stick shift into the drive mode? Well, first, it's not a stick shift. It's a gear shifter. So you put the gear shifter into the drive mode. The drive mode? I guess new cars do have modes now. They have eco mode and sport mode. So maybe they have drive mode. But we normally just say, put it in drive. For all the gears. Put it in drive. Put it in reverse to back up. Or put it in neutral. Or if you have a stick shift, you can say, put it in gear. But if it's an automatic, say, put it in drive. Put it in neutral. Put it in reverse. Pronunciation. Put it. Both T's are fast D's. Put it, put it in, put it in, put it in drive, put it in reverse, 
put it in neutral. That's the best way to say it. Don't say put the stick shift into the drive mode. Just say put it in drive. Example, to drive forward, you need to put it in drive. Let's practice. To drive forward, do you need to put it in drive? That's right. To drive forward, you need to put it in drive. And to back up, you need to put it in reverse. Let's practice. To back up, do you need to put it in reverse? That's right. To back up, you need to put it in reverse. This is also not correct. There is also another brake that this car has. It's called emergency brake. And uh, in Porsches, it's right here on the left. But in some cars, there's an additional handle that you can engage. And this is called emergency brake candle. I can't say it's called emergency brake or it's called emergency brake candle. Candle? It's not a candle, it's a handle. And I said it's a handle because handle is countable and brake is countable. So we have to use articles. Use a or the. It's called the emergency brake, or it's called an emergency brake, or it's called an emergency brake handle. Or you can say the, the emergency brake handle is not a candle, it's a handle. And we need to use articles. Some people use the emergency brake when they park their car. What about you? Do you use the emergency brake when you park your car? Very good. This is also not correct. And uh, it has different gauges. So it has diesel gauge, for example, because this car runs in diesel. I cannot say it has diesel gauge because it runs in diesel. First, gauge is countable. So I have to say it has a diesel gauge. Use the article a. Uh. For one, because gauge is countable. It has a diesel gauge and it runs on diesel. I cannot say it runs in diesel. I have to use the preposition on. It runs on diesel. When you talk about engines or motors, we use the verb run. Example, my car runs on regular gas. It doesn't run on diesel. Her car runs on diesel. It doesn't run on regular gas. Use the preposition on. So example, my car runs on regular gas. It doesn't run on diesel. What about your car? Does your car run on regular gas or does it run on diesel? Very good. And remember the word gauge. It's pronounced with the long A sound. It's spelled A-U, but it has a different pronunciation. Use the long A, gauge, gauge, and it's countable. So I can say a gauge or the gauge. I can say your gauge. Or because you have more than one, I can say gauges. Check your gauges. I always check my gauges when I'm driving. What about you? Do you always check your gauges when you're driving? Very good. This is also not correct. And whenever you try to flush, the water level just rose. It was kind of dangerous and didn't smell well, but then we fixed it. I cannot say it didn't smell well. Smell is a special verb. We cannot use well, the adverb with it. We have to use good. It didn't smell good. Remember, we have some special verbs for senses like sound, taste, smell. With actions like these, we cannot say well. I cannot say it smells well, it tastes well, or it sounds well. We have to say good. It tastes good, it sounds good, and it smells good. There are a lot of other verbs like this, but we're just going to practice with these three. Let's practice. This is garbage. Does it smell good? That's right. It doesn't smell good. This is my homemade soup. Does it taste good? That's right. It tastes good. I can't say it tastes well. I have to say good. This is my new stereo. How does it sound? Does it sound good? That's right. It sounds good. I can't say it sounds well. This is also not correct. Here we have two bedrooms, but just one bathroom. This is the first time I see something like this in the US. It's not correct to say, this is the first time I see something like this in the US. After you say, this is the first time, we have to use present perfect. I have seen. 
Make the contraction. I have together I've. I've seen. So it's correct to say, this is the first time I've seen something like this in the U.S. Example, this is the first time I've seen one of your videos. Let's practice. Is this the first time you've seen one of my videos? Very good. This is also not correct. This is used to wash your buddy and there are several words that you can use. I cannot say wash your buddy. Buddy? We have two words. We have body with the open ah sound like hot and stop, body, wash your body, and we have buddy with the short uh sound like cup and up, buddy. My buddy is my friend. This can be a little confusing because we have these words too. We have somebody, anybody, nobody, everybody. We spell them like body, but we pronounce them like buddy with a short sound, using the short uh like up and cup, somebody, anybody, nobody, everybody. But if I talk about my body, use the open sound. Wash your body. This is also not correct. And this system is called faucet. Sometimes you can call it tap. Normally you have your tap in the kitchen. This is the faucet. First, we need articles, a faucet and a tap. So yes, you can call it a faucet and I guess you can call it a tap, but it's not very common. But the tap is normally in the kitchen? No, they're all faucets. It doesn't matter where it is, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, anywhere it is, it's called a faucet. It's countable, say a, uh, call it a faucet. So when do we use the word tap? Well, I don't call this a tap, I call it a faucet. I've never heard anyone call it a tap. I guess you could, but I call it a faucet. We use tap in other ways. For example, if you go to a bar and they have draft beer, I can say, what kind of beer do you have on tap? They have different kinds of beer on tap. This is a tap. And one more thing, water that comes out of the faucet is called tap water. But we don't normally call a faucet a tap. But we call the water tap water. Confusing, right? Example, I don't buy bottled water. I think it's bad for the environment. So I drink tap water. I drink filtered tap water. I have a filter in my kitchen and I filter the tap water. So I drink filtered tap water. What about you? Do you drink filtered tap water? Very good. This is also not correct. We have a toilet paper. I cannot say we have a toilet paper. We don't use the article a uh, here. We just say we have toilet paper. We have some toilet paper, or maybe we don't have any toilet paper. So toilet paper is not countable. But what if you want to count it? Okay, then you have to say a roll, a roll of toilet paper. This is a roll of toilet paper. I cannot say this is a toilet paper. I have to use the word roll. This is a roll of toilet paper. Let's practice. What is this? Is this a roll of toilet paper? That's right, this is a roll of toilet paper. Example, do you have any toilet paper? And I say, yes, we have some toilet paper, not a toilet paper. Let's practice. Do you have any toilet paper? Very good. This is also not correct. So something we have below the toilet is called drain. Something we have below the toilet is called drain. When I heard this, I thought she had a little drain in the floor under her toilet. But she's just talking about the toilet. We don't call it a drain. It's just called a toilet. This is also not correct. The drain became blocked with something and we fixed it with a device that I'm going to show you right now. If your drain is blocked, then you use this toilet plunger to help fix the problem. Toilet plunger. If your drain is blocked, it's not a drain, it's a toilet. So we have to say, if your toilet is clogged up or clogged, we don't normally say blocked. It's better to say clogged, but it's not a drain, it's just a toilet. So if your toilet is clogged or if your toilet is clogged up, you can say it either way. And you can also say if your toilet is stopped up. Pronunciation, stopped up. 
link the T sound with the next word. Stopped up. Stopped up. If your toilet is stopped up, you need a plunger. If your toilet is clogged, you need a plunger. If your toilet is clogged up, you need a plunger. But it's not a drain. It's just a toilet. Let's practice. What do you need if your toilet is stopped up? That's right. If your toilet is stopped up, you need a plunger. What do you need if your toilet is clogged? That's right. If your toilet is clogged, you need a plunger. What do you do if your toilet is clogged up? That's right. If your toilet is clogged up, you need a plunger. Don't say your drain is blocked. That's a different situation. This is also not correct. This object, by the way, is called a chest of drawers. And uh, yeah, we use it to store baby's clothes. I cannot say we use it to store baby's clothes. I can use an article and say the for the specific baby. We use it to store the baby's clothes. Or you can eliminate the S and say baby clothes, not baby's clothes. We use it to store baby clothes. Example, you can buy baby clothes at Target. So this is very special because other kinds of clothes we use possession. For example, men's clothes, women's clothes, children's clothes, we use apostrophe S. But baby, we don't. We don't say baby's clothes. We eliminate the S and we say baby clothes. So it's special. If I want to buy baby clothes, I buy baby clothes at Target. What about you? If you need to buy baby clothes, where do you buy them? Very good. This is also not correct. Another thing that might be interesting for you if you are from Europe, the thing is called shower valve. The thing is called shower valve? The word valve is countable. I have to say a. Uh. The thing is called a shower valve. If you only have one, you can say the, the shower valve. But if it's not the only one, use the article a. Uh. This is a shower valve. Pronunciation, valve. Use the short ass sound like black cat. Valve. This thing is called a shower valve or a shower handle. This is also not correct. The next thing that is super useful, pacifier basically saves my life. I cannot say pacifier basically saves my life. It's a countable noun. I have to say the pacifier. If you only have one, use the. If you speak in general, you say a. Uh. A pacifier is a good thing to have. But in this case, it's specific, so it's better to say the. The pacifier basically saves my life. You can also use possession. You can say her, referring to the baby girl. Her pacifier basically saves my life. But we cannot say pacifier basically saves my life. We need the pacifier or her pacifier. This is also not correct. So bassinet, it's different from baby crib in a way that baby crib I think this one can be used up to eight years of age. I cannot say bassinet is different from baby crib. These are all countable nouns. I have to say a uh, because it's one in general. In general, a bassinet is different from a baby crib. Let's practice. Is a bassinet different from a baby crib? That's right. A bassinet is different from a baby crib. This is also not correct. This is actually, I love the name for it. This is called baby gym mat. So this is called mobile. This is baby feeder pacifier. It's infant car seat. So it's good up to 12 months. I'm going to show you something that is called baby carrier, game changer. And you put your baby here. This is called baby carrier. I was like, why have a separate dining room when we can have kids room here? So these are all countable nouns. We have to use the article a, uh. or if it starts with a vowel, use the article an. So this is a baby feeder pacifier. I have to say a. Uh. This is an infant car seat. I have to say an, an infant car seat, because seat is countable. You can have one seat or two seats. This is an infant car seat. I cannot say this is called carrier. This is called a baby carrier, or this is called a carrier. Carrier is countable. We have to use a. I can't say we have kids room here. Room is countable, so I need an article. We have a kids room here. Or specific, it's the only one. We have the kids room here. 
or we can use possession. We have our kids' room here, but we cannot say we have kids' room here. This is also not correct. Excited about the flight because I slept for three hours this night. I cannot say I slept for three hours this night. She's talking about the past. She says slept. If it's in the past, we have to say last night. She only slept for three hours last night. Let's practice. How long did she sleep last night? That's right. She slept for three hours last night. Not this night. What if I talk about the future? Can I say this night for the future? No. If it's in the future, we say tonight. So remember, if it's in the future, say tonight. If it's in the past, say last night. This is also not correct. American airports is where you get less service. I cannot say American airports is where you get less service. American airports is... It's plural. We have to say are. American airports are where you get less service. This doesn't sound right either. Let's change it. Let's start with at. At American airports, you get less service. Or I can switch it and say, you get less service at American airports. This is the way to say it. So what do you think? Do you think you get less service at American airports? Very good. This is also not correct. Basically, a red-eye flight is when you have to wake up super early, maybe like even 2 a.m. in the night to get your flight. I cannot say 2 a.m. in the night. We normally don't say in the night. We say at night. Okay, let's try that. 2 a.m. at night. Mm, no. We say 2 a.m. in the morning because it's after 12. It's after midnight, so technically it's morning. We say 2 a.m. in the morning, or better, 2 o'clock in the morning. Example, my neighbor had a party, and they were making a lot of noise at 2 o'clock in the morning. Let's practice. Were they making a lot of noise at 2 o'clock in the morning? That's right. They were making a lot of noise at 2 o'clock in the morning. This is also not correct. So if you have time at the airport and you decided that you want to treat yourself, then do some duty-free shopping. I cannot say if you have time and you decided to treat yourself. The first action is in present, if you have time. So the second action needs to be in present too. It's not past. If you have time and you decide to treat yourself, not decided, we have to use present here. If you have time and you decide to treat yourself, have an ice cream. If I have time and I decide to treat myself at the airport, I have a beer. What about you? If you have time at the airport and you decide to treat yourself, what do you buy? Very good. This is also not correct. In Dubai, for example, you can get a free stroller for your kids, but they don't provide you with free strollers. I cannot say free strollers. The word's not pronounced stroller, strollers. It's pronounced strollers. We have to use that long O sound like no and go. Strollers. If you have a baby, you need a stroller. She has a baby, so she needs a stroller. She needs a stroller to go for a walk with her baby. Let's practice. Does she need a stroller? That's right, she needs a stroller. Does she need a stroller to go for a walk with her baby? That's right, she needs a stroller to go for a walk with her baby. This is also not correct. Again, with domestic flight, you don't need to do that. I cannot say with domestic flight, you don't need to do that. The word flight is countable. I can speak in general and say flights. With domestic flights, you don't need to do that. But it's better to say on. On domestic flights. On domestic flights, you don't have to do that. On domestic flights, you don't need to do that. Or you can use the article a. Uh. On a domestic flight, you don't need to do that. But I cannot say with domestic flight, you don't need to do that. Flight is countable. We need to put S at the end, flights, or we need to use the article a. Uh. And it's better to use the preposition on. On domestic flights. Example, on domestic flights, you don't need a passport. 
Let's practice. Do you need a passport on domestic flights? That's right. On domestic flights, you don't need a passport. This is also not correct. Basically, rice can be 7-10% to 10 cheaper compared to local stores. You cannot say basically price can be 7-10% to 10 cheaper. The word price is countable. And here it's specific, so we have to say the. Basically, the price can be 7-10% to 10 cheaper. And because price is countable, I can put an S after it and say prices. Then you're speaking in general. Basically, prices can be 7-10% to 10 cheaper. This is also correct. So you need to say the price can be cheaper or prices can be cheaper. But not price can be cheaper. Example, prices can be cheaper if you shop at the discount store. Let's practice. Can prices be cheaper if you shop at the discount store? That's right. Prices can be cheaper if you shop at the discount store. This is also not correct. But on this flight, they're not going to give food to people. So always, always have your food. I cannot say they're not going to give food to people. They're not going to? What is gonna? Gonna is a reduction of going to. If I have going with ing, I need another verb. I need the verb to be, are. They are. Well, if I'm using a reduction, I need to use a contraction. So they are, contraction, they're. They're not. They're not going to give food to people. Or they're not going to serve food to the passengers. Remember, when you use gonna, make the contraction. I'm gonna. He's gonna, you're gonna, they're gonna. It's a little sound, but it's very important. So the idea, they're not gonna serve food to the passengers because the plane is about to land. Let's practice. Are they gonna serve food to the passengers? That's right, they're not gonna serve food to the passengers because the plane is about to land. This is also not correct. And if you're flying business or first, you're boarding in the first group. I cannot say if you're flying business or first, you're boarding in the first group. So we have two things. We have business class and we have first class. Well, we can abbreviate business class and say business. If you're flying business, you're boarding in the first group. This is okay. But we cannot abbreviate first class. We cannot say if you're flying first, you're boarding in the first group. We have to say first class. We cannot abbreviate it. If you're flying first class, you're boarding in the first group. Let's practice. If you're flying first class, are you boarding in the first group or the second group? That's right. If you're flying first class, you're boarding in the first group. This is also not correct. This is a baby crib. This is the right way to call baby bed. I cannot say this is the right way to call baby bed. First, baby bed is countable, so I have to say a, uh, a baby bed. And I cannot say this is the right way to call. I cannot use way and call together. I can't say call it this way or call it that way. Just like you can't say call it like this or call it like that. We can't use these words in combination. You call it this or you call it that. Not this way or that way and this is the right way, there's no way you just call it this. It's called this. It's called a baby bed. Don't use way. This is called a baby bed. Let's practice. What is this called? Is this called a baby bed? That's right. This is called a baby bed. This is also not correct. And this is called a cotton bud. This is not called a cotton bud. It has two names. You can call it a Q-tip. That's the brand name of the most popular ones, Q-tips. So you can say this is a Q-tip. Or you can call it a cotton swab. But not a cotton bud. If you asked me for a cotton bud, I wouldn't know what you were talking about. Because they're called Q-tips. Or cotton swabs. People use Q-tips to clean their ears. Or I can say people use cotton swabs to clean their ears. Let's practice. Do you use Q-tips to clean your ears? Very good. 
Do you use cotton swabs to clean your ears? Very good. It's not correct to say this. This is king bed. So king bed is usually the largest bed you can think of. That's right. We cannot say this is king bed. Bed is countable and it's one. So we have to say a, a king bed. This is a king bed. If you describe, we say a king bed is the largest bed. We have to say a uh, before king bed. A king bed is the largest bed. It means one bed in general. So when you talk about different sized beds, make sure you say a. Uh, a twin bed, a double bed, a full bed, a queen bed, and a king bed. I don't like a king bed. I think it's too big. I prefer a queen bed. Let's practice. So, do you like a king bed or a queen bed? I prefer a queen bed. What kind of bed does she prefer? Does she prefer a queen bed or a king bed? That's right. She prefers a queen bed. What about you? What bed do you prefer? A queen bed or a king bed? Very good. And it's not correct to say this. So this is curtains. That's right. We cannot say this is curtains. Because curtains is plural, curtains, we have to say these are. We cannot say this is. This is is for singular things. But if it's plural, we say these are. These are curtains. Pronunciation, curtains. We have two correct pronunciations. You can say curtains, pronouncing the T, or curtains, making a stop T, curt, and then fall to the N. Curtain, curtains. So the two pronunciations, curtains or curtains. Curtains is the more common pronunciation in American English. Let's practice with these are. What are these? These are curtains. What are these? Very good. And what are these? These are glasses. What are these? Very good. These are glasses. And it's not correct to say this. Uh, there is nothing bad in asking for a better view. We cannot use the preposition in after bad. We can say there's nothing bad about asking for a better view. So bad about is correct, but not bad in. But the best expression to use is wrong with. There's nothing wrong with asking for a better view. Use the expression wrong with. Example, there's nothing wrong with it. You cannot say there's nothing bad in it. The expression is bad about, there's nothing bad about it, but more correct, more common English is there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with asking for a better view. Remember, a better view. There's nothing wrong with asking for a better view. Let's practice with the expression wrong with. Is there anything wrong with asking for a better view? No, there is nothing wrong with asking for a better view. Is there anything wrong with asking for a better view? That's right. There's nothing wrong with asking for a better view. It's not correct to say this. They are the comfiest slippers I've ever worn. That's right. We cannot say these are the comfier slippers I've ever worn. Comfier is to compare. You can say more comfortable or comfier. These slippers are comfier than my work shoes. You're comparing. These slippers are comfier than my work shoes. But if I say these are the comfiest, comfiest, these are the comfiest slippers I've ever worn. That means these are the best, number one slippers, most comfortable. These are the comfiest slippers I've ever worn. We cannot say these are the comfier slippers I've ever worn. We have to use est at the end. Comfiest. These are the comfiest slippers I've ever worn. And it's not correct to say this. I do not understand people who use laundry at the hotel. That's right. We cannot say I don't understand people who use laundry. If you're talking about a hotel, we say use the laundry service. You cannot say use laundry. So, I don't understand people who use the laundry service. You can also use the action do. Do laundry. When you say do laundry, you can say do the laundry. You can say do my laundry or do your laundry. Or you can just say do laundry. You don't have to say anything in the middle. 
So three ways, do the laundry, do my laundry, or do laundry. But we cannot say use laundry. Again, if you're talking about a hotel, say use the laundry service. If you're speaking more in general, do laundry, do the laundry, do your laundry. And it's not correct to say this. You can basically walk a block to use the laundry or basically I would just take enough clothes with me to not have to use the laundry. We cannot say walk a block to use a laundry. Laundry is not countable, so we cannot say a laundry. And we cannot say use the laundry. If you're at the hotel, you can say use the laundry service. But if you walk a block, you're going to a different place. You're going to a place to do your laundry. Remember, you can say do your laundry, do the laundry, or just do laundry. Let's practice. When you stay at a hotel, do you use the laundry service? No, I never use the laundry service at the hotel. Does she use the laundry service at the hotel? That's right, she never uses the laundry service at the hotel. Let's practice. And how often do you do laundry? I do laundry once a week. How often does she do laundry? That's right, she does laundry once a week. And it's not correct to say this. And if they like you, if they have free rooms, maybe they give you one. That's right, it's not correct to say, if they like you, maybe they give you one. This is a conditional and we have to use will in the second part. If they like you, maybe they will give you one. We cannot say they give you one. We need to use future, will. If they like you, maybe they will. You can do contraction. They will together. They'll, they'll, they'll give you one. If they like you, maybe they'll give you one. Let's practice. If they like you, will they give you a better room? Yes, if they like you, they will give you a better room. If they like you, will they give you a better room? That's right. If they like you, they'll give you a better room. When you tell something nice to the person who's selecting the room for you. You cannot say you tell something nice to the person. In this case, we have to use the verb say. If you say something nice to the person. Remember the difference between say and tell. Say is only information. You say something, you say nothing, or say anything. We cannot say tell. Tell is person to person. I tell you something, or you tell me something. So tell is used for person to person. I tell you, you tell me. If we don't have person to person, we use say. I say something, you say something. So I can say, I tell you something, or you tell me something. It's person to person. But if it's just one person, I say something, you say something. So you say something nice to the person, not tell. Let's practice. Did you say something nice to your friend on her birthday? Yes, I said something nice to my friend on her birthday. I said happy birthday. Did she say something nice to her friend? That's right, she said something nice to her friend. This is not correct. I want you to think about English as a lifestyle, English as an instrument to live a better life. That's right. English is not an instrument. Well, we don't say that. We don't say English is an instrument. When referring to languages, we don't use the word instrument. We use the word tool. So I can say English is a tool. English is a tool that will help you in life. It's an important tool. So English is an important tool that will help you in life. Let's practice. Is English an important tool? That's right. English is an important tool that will help you in life. Remember, don't say instrument when talking about languages. Use the word tool. So let's talk about the difference. These are tools. And there are a lot of tools in the toolbox. This thing's called a toolbox. Let's practice. Are there a lot of tools in the toolbox? That's right, there are a lot of tools in the toolbox. And these are instruments. These are musical instruments. I play a musical instrument. What about you? Do you play a musical instrument? Very good. And what about these? You can call these tools or instruments. 
but it's more common to call them instruments. These are surgical instruments. And the surgeons use a lot of different kinds of instruments to do surgery. Let's practice. Do surgeons use a lot of different kinds of instruments? That's right. Surgeons use a lot of different kinds of instruments. These are instruments. So remember, these are instruments, these are instruments, and these are tools. And if I talk about a language, English, English is a tool. It's an important tool. They will help you in life. This is also not correct. So this is actually a restaurant, but this outdoor seating looks like a typical San Francisco cable car. I cannot say outdoor seating, outdoor seating. It's pronounced outdoor seating. We have the T and the D. The T makes a stop T. That means you put your tongue up in the T position, but you don't release the T sound. You just put the tongue up. Outdoor. 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 The stress is on the first syllable. Outdoor seating. We cannot say outdoor. Outdoor. We cannot use a fast D. We need that stop T and then the D. A full D. Outdoor. The restaurant has outdoor seating available. Pronunciation, seating. The T is between vowels, so in this word, we hear the fast D. Seating, seating. Not outdoor seating, but outdoor seating. The restaurant has outdoor seating available. Let's practice. Does the restaurant have outdoor seating available? That's right, the restaurant has outdoor seating available. Let's talk about the difference between these two words. We have outdoor and outdoors. One difference, the most obvious difference, is there's an S. There's an S at the end of outdoors. But there's another difference. The stress is different. When I say outdoor, the stress is on the first syllable, outdoor seating. And when I say outdoors, the stress is on the second syllable, outdoors. And the difference in use? Well, Outdoor is an adjective that has to go before a noun, like in outdoor seating. Seating is a noun, and outdoor is an adjective before that noun. So if I say outdoor, I need a noun after it. But if I say outdoors with the S and the stress on the second syllable, it's the same as outside. I can say they're eating outside, or they're eating outdoors. Let's practice. Are they eating outdoors? That's right, they're eating outdoors. Is there outdoor seating available? That's right, there's outdoor seating available. So remember, pronunciation, outdoor and outdoors. Different uses and different stress. And don't forget the S. Let's practice some more. Outdoor activities. So we see this is the adjective before a noun. So there's no S and the stress is on the first syllable. Outdoor activities. They're doing a lot of different outdoor activities. Let's practice. Are they doing a lot of different outdoor activities? That's right, they're doing a lot of different outdoor activities. Or I can say they like spending time outdoors. It's the same as saying they like to spend time outside. Put the stress on the second syllable, outdoors. And you have an S at the end making a Z sound, like zebra. Outdoors. They like to spend a lot of time outdoors. Let's practice. Do they like to spend a lot of time outdoors? That's right. They like to spend a lot of time outdoors. This is also not correct. I've had so many meetings here when I was living in San Francisco. I cannot say I've had so many meetings here when I was living in San Francisco. We have to say I had so many meetings here when I was living in San Francisco. Why? Because when you say I was living in San Francisco, you're talking about one specific time. So we have to use simple past because you're talking about one specific time. I had so many meetings here when I was living in San Francisco. Why not I've had? Because when you say I've had or I have had, 
I have contraction, I've, I've had, you're referring to something in a non-specific past or more than once in the past. I've had so many meetings this month. You're talking about from the past to the present. I've had so many meetings this month or at no specific time. I've had so many meetings. I'm really tired because I've had so many meetings. But if you give a specific time, when I was living in San Francisco, we have to use simple past. I had so many meetings here when I was living in San Francisco. Let's practice. So she had a lot of meetings when she was living in San Francisco. Let's practice. Did she have a lot of meetings when she was living in San Francisco? That's right. She had a lot of meetings when she was living in San Francisco. You simple pass had because you're talking about a specific time in the past. Another example. He saw an accident when he was driving home from work. Because I said when he was driving home from work, I'm giving a specific time. I have to use simple past. He saw an accident or maybe he saw many accidents. It doesn't matter. I have to use simple past. He saw Many accidents when he was driving home from work, or he saw an accident, one, when he was driving home from work. You simple past saw. Let's practice. Did he see an accident when he was driving home from work? That's right. He saw an accident when he was driving home from work. Did he see a lot of accidents when he was driving home from work? That's right. He saw many accidents. He saw a lot of accidents when he was driving home from work. So can I say he has seen a lot of accidents? Sure. We just need to change one thing. We need to change when to while. And we need to change one more thing. We need to change the verb and not make a complete idea like this. While driving home from work. If you say while driving home from work, then you can use present perfect. He has seen. He has seen many accidents while driving home from work. But if I say when he was driving home from work, then we cannot use present perfect. We have to use simple past. So the example with present perfect, he has seen or he has contraction. He's he's seen a lot of accidents while driving home from work. This is correct. Let's practice. Has he seen a lot of accidents while driving home from work? That's right. He has seen a lot of accidents while driving home from work. This is also not correct. Street lamp is usually found on the side of the road. I cannot say street lamp is usually found on the side of the road. I have to say a street lamp. If I'm talking about one in general, I have to use the article a. A street lamp is usually found on the side of the road. Or I can use the if I'm talking about a specific street lamp. Example, the street lamp here in the picture. The street lamp is on, or is the street lamp off? No, the street lamp is on. So either a street lamp or the street lamp, depending if you're talking about one in general or a specific one. So a street lamp is usually found on the side of the road. Let's practice. Where is a street lamp usually found? That's right. A street lamp is usually found on the side of the road. And this specific street lamp, the, the street lamp, is the street lamp on or off? That's right. The street lamp is on. But, you know, the word street lamp is not that common. It's actually better to say street light. Street light is more common than street lamp. This is also not correct. First of all, I want you to remember this number, $238. This is your fine if you don't stop at a stop sign. The word is pronounced eight. I cannot say 230 it. 230 it dollars it. It's not 230 it. 238 dollars. It's 238. The word eight has a long a sound like eat in the present in the past eight. It's the same sound as the number eight. And we also see the long a sound in late. So eight, eight, and late. Use the long A sound. And the T at the end, you can make a stop T. You don't have to say eight.
You don't have to release the T. 238. 238. Not 238, but 8. Use the long A sound. And let's talk about the word 100. We see the DR making the J sound. 100. 100. 238. Thank you for watching. And keep watching to practice more with the pronunciation of 100. And we'll see you next time. Today we're going to learn how Americans really speak. So let's get started. Let's look at this word. We do not pronounce it hundred. We have two pronunciations. One is hundred. The dr together makes the j j j sound like juice and jump. J j j. Put it together with the r sound. Hundred j dread. Hundred. Hundred. The d at the end is a stop d. Stop the air. Don't release the d. Not hundred. Hundred. That's one pronunciation. Another pronunciation is hundred. Hundred. We pronounce it hundred when you have and after it. Example, 120 minutes. A hundred, hundred and, hundred and, and is pronounced mm, mm. hundred and, hundred and. When people speak fast, that's how they pronounce it. 120 minutes. Two of these brothers walked out of the desert 150 years after having found the grail and began the long journey back to France, but only one of them made it. 807 phones are live in this area. Okay, 220 down, 523 to go. Sometime it'd be 120, 130 degrees in the ring. More than 100 men volunteered for the job. You don't have to pronounce it like this. You don't have to say 100 and 100 and, but you need to be able to understand it. 120 minutes. 100. And. It's a hundred and. You can pronounce it like this. 100, 100 and. 120 minutes. With a j sound. But you see, when people say it faster, it doesn't sound like a hundred. It sounds like a hundred. A hundred. A hundred. 120 minutes. So you'll hear both pronunciations. A hundred and. Or a hundred and. That's using hundred plus and together. They link together. Example, 120 minutes is the same as two hours. Let's practice. What is 120 minutes? That's right. 120 minutes is the same as two hours. $150. $150 is a lot of money. It's enough money for a big party. Let's practice. Is $150 enough money for a big party? That's right. I think $150 is enough money for a big party. So remember the pronunciation. The word by itself, hundred. But when you hear it together with and, you have two pronunciations. Hundred and, and hundred and. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.